Sound speeds. One of the things I enjoy doing here on YouTube is responding to your comments, and provided YouTube makes me aware of them, I will respond. Now, sometimes people will go back and watch older videos and comment on those. Now, sometimes that leads us to an interesting discussion, like for example, there's been an update in the technology, or an update via firmware, or something to that that like, and I have to address that maybe in the description below because it's too late for me to go back and add more to that video. But sometimes there's also a question that arises based on a new video that's released. And I received a comment not long ago from someone who was asking a question about a video he saw on YouTube. And I put the, the whole comment down there for you to look at in the exchange I had back and forth with this particular viewer, but it did lend to an interesting question. And I'm going to address that question in this video. The video we're going to be discussing is on Cloud Microphone's YouTube channel, and it's called Get Lifted, Don't Eat Your Mic. Released on November 23rd, 2020, it has 1,121 views to date. Now, the part that we're going to be looking at is this part right here. Loss of gain now means what? I have to eat my mic. And you notice, as I turn my head, you can hear that loss every time I turn my head, every which way. And we're going to be comparing this part to another part of the video right here. I can turn my head any which way. And listen, no presence loss, no signal loss. Now, not only are we going to be discussing this, but I think this warrants a test. Just like in the video, I have my SM7B running through a short cable into my CloudLifter CL1 and then out of that into my preamp, which is a Sound Devices Mix Pre 6. And if you want to follow along, I am using 34 decibels of gain and of course phantom power is enabled. That's the whole purpose behind a cloud lifter, isn't it? Now I'm going to position myself approximately one fist length, which is what, about three and maybe three and a half inches, something like that away from it. And if I were to talk directly into it and now start to turn my head, so that way my voice is being directed to the side here with the cloud lifter completely enabled and uh, doing its, its magic here, you should be able to hopefully hear my voice as it's being directed to the left and right of the microphone. It is going to be talking a little bit off access to it, but the microphone is still pointed directly at my mouth. So this is one of those situations where my mouth is on access to the microphone, but my microphone is off access to my mouth at least sometimes. So basically, as I'm turning my head this way, you should hear it technically fall off ever so slightly because I'm not keeping my mouth perfectly in the same exact space and place as I move my head back and forth. So now we're going to do this exact same test, but without the cloud lifter installed. And so on my Sound Devices Mix Pre 6, I'm going to have to hit stop and I'm going to disable phantom power and then gain up 25 dB to 59 decibels in order to supposedly match our level. Now that I've made this change, you're hearing my voice directly into the microphone, bypassing the CloudLifter CL1, and so it's not involved at all. The only difference is I'm now giving the gain from my Sound Devices Mix Pre 6 as opposed to going through the CloudLifter, which, by the way, does change the preamplifier that you're using for your microphone. Because if this isn't involved anymore, adding clean gain, then it is no longer preamplifying my microphone. So I'm actually using the preamps on the Sound Devices Mix Pre 6 now as opposed to the preamps on the CL1. Now I'm going to match my distance off the microphone and I'm going to do the exact same thing as I did before here and I'm going to be turning my head left and right. I don't know to the extent that I turned it in the other video but I want to be fair about this. So I'm a little bit on the close side. Let's go right there. Turning my head once again and seeing if this changes anything uh, with regards to the uh, ability of the cloud lifter to boost my voice as I go off axis. Is it changing anything at all? I don't know if it is or isn't uh, until I listen back and see how this recording was in post. But I want you to be listening to it as I turn my head here. And as I pass through again, the middle part is when I'm on access to the mic and the mic is on access to my mouth. That's the critical part right there. No one's really going to be turning their head off axis and expecting a microphone or even a cloud lifter CL1 to keep that level up high. But that is our test. Now let's go into post and see what happens. The two video clips are now lined up so we can see the head turn position and only the head turn position. Let's watch one after the other. As I'm turning my head this way, you should hear it technically fall off ever so slightly. Turning my head once again and seeing if this changes anything uh, with regards to the, as I'm turning my head this way, you should hear it technically fall off ever so slightly. Turning my head once again and seeing if this changes anything uh, with regards to the, as I'm turning my head this way, you should hear it technically fall off ever so slightly. Turning my head once again and seeing if this changes anything uh, with regards to the, 
So after watching this video comparison, what are your thoughts? I've done multiple videos about the Cloudlifter CL1, including my most popular, which is comparing it to the SE Electronics Dynamite DM1 and the Triton Audio Fed Head on a system, my Mix Pre 6 here, that has clean preamps. And I can tell you right now that if you already have clean preamps, then something like a Cloudlifter CL1 is probably not necessary. You've already spent your money on the preamplifiers. But if you're using something like an H-series Zoom recorder, then you don't have clean preamps. And being able to turn down that preamplifier so it's not working nearly as hard and increasing your signal to that preamplifier is going to be very helpful in lowering your noise floor. So something like this will definitely come in handy in that circumstance. And what it basically is doing is adding a preamplifier circuit, keeping in mind that when acoustic vibrations turn into voltage through your microphone, it basically is converted into voltage, something like a cloud lifter or your interface all it's doing is increasing that voltage by using 48 volt phantom power from your interface. So it doesn't know if it is a signal coming from your voice or if it's background noise, whatever that noise happens to be, it's going to increase that by about 25 decibels. And that's essentially how it works. So in something like this case, is it actually producing any added effect other than adding gain? So if I have a fixed distance away from that microphone and I turn my head, is it actually benefiting? Well, it's my opinion that it doesn't really. So I'm not sure exactly what they did on the Cloud Lifter video that uh, they released, but I'm not going to call them liars. But what I will tell you is that if you watch that video and you were starting to think that perhaps the CL1 adds some sort of magic voodoo, I can tell you right now, if you have clean preamps, doesn't really help a whole lot. Now, perhaps if you were using more of that boost and your system doesn't have the clean, cleanest preamps, that would be a different test. I can't do that test because my clean, my clean preamps are already clean. Sorry about that. But I can imagine that it probably wouldn't be that much different. But regardless, if you have any experience to the contrary, by all means, please write it in the comments below. Thank you for tuning in this episode of Soundspeeds. Be sure to tune in the future for more sound tests is this a debunk? I don't even know. And of course, sound advice. Have a question you'd like answered or want to add something? Be sure to write it in the comment section down below. You can also make a suggestion for future topics of discussion. Again, comment section down below or you can email me at soundspeeds at yahoo.com. Be sure to subscribe and turn on notifications so you won't miss out on future sound advice.